Wingman Joker thank you for listening to this channel and please support the channel. Please subscribe. Chapter 02. The Original World. Making sure the bomb was in its correct place, Adrian carefully slashed his finger with his dagger, then quickly regretted it remembering that it was the same dagger he used to slash rabbits earlier. Shit, will it get infected? He pondered. Never mind that, this body was not going to live that long anyway. Slowly, he began to draw a strange circuit on the bomb itself with his blood. This was the method he finally developed after years of research and never intended to show the world, this world. Adrian was not from this universe in the first place. He was born in another universe that although very similar to this one, had one large difference. It had magic instead of science. There they also had everything from planes to phones. The only difference was that there they used mana instead of electricity and mana stones instead of fuel. In that world like in this one, he was hailed as a genius, a boy prodigy. However, unlike this world where he came from humble origins, there, he was born to one of the highest powers who controlled the world. Magicians. He belonged to the Red Oak family, one of those who were at the very top. When he was born, he was found to have the most magical talent in the last 1000 years and many expected that he would become the next arch magician and the head of his family. He didn't disappoint. When he was only 6 years old, after completing his first two magical circuits in just one year, he was already on the verge of completing his third. A thing that people in their 20s struggle with. He completed it at 7. What others deemed hard, came naturally to him. By the age of 8, he managed not only to author more than groundbreaking 50 papers and patients for magic circuits and spells but also to solve one of the 10 most difficult magical problems in the world. The Millennial Magical Problems Many thought he was wasting his time and talent when he started working on it, but blowing every expectation, he really did it. It earned him not only many honors but also his own personal grand mansion, lab, and a lot of resources and money that came from the companies that came to invest in his new patented spells. And yes, in that world spells were subject to copyright, like everything else in life these days. It was all with the help of his great magician of a father who pampered the shit out of him. Anyways, all of this, also made him gain a very unhealthy dose of arrogance, and rightly so, that arrogance was the cause of his downfall. It happened when he was nine. After secretly completing his fourth circle and right before the date for his first family assessment, he was, convinced, that he had to do something grander befitting his talent. Members of his family had to undergo three assessments as they grew up. One at the age of 10, another at 14, and the last at 18. At every assessment, they would be tested, questioned, and asked to present what they achieved during the previous years. Depending on the assessment results, an heir would also be given a suitable position, resources, and training. Although starting at the age of 10 was a little too early, it was the best time to tell prodigies from the rest. Especially in a magic world where someone's aptitude would be clear at that age. The family needed to tell those apart to dedicate enough resources for their growth. After the last assessment at 18, an heir's final grade would be decided, and depending on it, his position in the family would be cemented. That was unless he could achieve something really great after that. But those people who could do that were rarer than unicorn horns. A magician's skill and growth rate would usually be fixed after the age of 20. Back then, a few months before the assessment, Adrian was bored out of his mind after his father forbade him to work on random things and ordered him to focus on solidifying his magical circles for the assessment. Back then, he, accidentally, stumbled upon an ancient scroll that included things he had never seen before, yet very intriguing, forbidden black magic. At that time, he was so full of himself, that it never occurred to him how strange it was for a kid like him to find this precious thing on a normal stall that just happened to be on an abandoned street that his driver had to, accidentally, go through due to a sudden change of security plans. His car just had to stop temporarily near that stall for him to notice the magical energy around the scroll and leapt out from the car to take a look. There was definitely something fishy about this. Whoever did it, knew too well that he would jump at that scroll like a hungry beast the moment he noticed it and they were right. If he had to guess who was behind this, it was someone close to him or maybe someone from the family. They clearly didn't want him to die, but to commit a grave offense. The reason could have been anything from making him ruin his own potential to eliminating his father from the race to be the next family head. It might also be to get their hands on his patents. If he died, those would go to his father directly, not to the family. He was too young back then to remember or realize the situation around him clearly. But what others didn't expect was that by studying the forbidden scroll, 
Adrian didn't ruin his potential, but on the contrary, he discovered that it was written in ciphers and by decoding them, his knowledge vastly expanded as he began to comprehend things others didn't, yes, his magical aptitude and talent were so great that the forbidden knowledge was easy for him to comprehend. Everything was all good if he carried on carefully, but as an arrogant brat, he was bound to make a mistake sooner or later, and that's when it happened. One week before his assessment, in the basement of his mansion, he was putting the final touches on his forbidden mana collecting magical array that he developed when it happened. It was meant to collect mana from the ether, bypassing the world's mana density rules that was one of the hurdles of creating powerful spells. This was something that many magicians pursued but failed to accomplish. But with the forbidden knowledge he had, he found a way. Unfortunately, Adrian finally made a huge mistake. Like all those geniuses do sooner or later. Although he was still not sure what he did wrong, he seemed to have underestimated the energy ether. It was not something a human could control. The array that didn't work as planned exploded and just when he thought he was dead, he woke up here in a parallel world without magic. At first, he was shocked, not knowing what happened and what to do. Here, in this new world, he was not in his own body, but that of another young man who was born to a normal middle-class family. Naturally, not realizing what the fuck was going on, he wanted to return to his own world and family. He began mumbling about magic and such, forcing his new family to seek a doctor's help. The guy only had to listen to him for five minutes before directly recommending him to an asylum where they drugged the fuck out of him for a few months. Still, as time progressed he slowly came to terms with his situation. He was finally convinced that this was not his world, and there seemed to be no way back. He began to wonder whether his case was that of transmigration, or did he die and was reborn, he didn't know. But whatever happened, it made his memories merge perfectly with those of the one who had the body before. He could naturally and easily speak this world's language, but he didn't notice it at first. Was this connected to some soul magic? Slowly, while pondering on many things, he began acting cautiously and timidly, allowing them to release him. After that, he wanted to take the time to explore the world he was in and find out the answers to the questions he had, but as what happens with every young man, things didn't go as planned and he was forced to go to school shortly after. There, he didn't fit in. But that was unimportant, as the lame and easy lessons gave him all the time to sort things out. The first thing he confirmed was that there was no mana in this world, instead the people here used the thing called electricity to power their technology which fascinated him. In his world, they didn't have computers and were stuck with basic magical relay machines to do their automation. Deciding to explore this to the fullest, he put all his effort into studying and researching the vast knowledge of math, chemistry, and physics that his old world had no idea about. He had a hunch that those things might carry some hope for him to return to his original world. He didn't really fit in this one. His effort was not in vain as just as he turned 14 he shocked the world when he managed to invent a 98.9% .9 efficient electrical engine using ideas from his original world, combining them with the latest technology. He was quickly hailed as a boy genius. This not only made him a star of sorts in the academic field, but it also earned him his first pot of gold and convinced his family to give him some freedom. After that, using the money he got he began studying different fields, presenting one invention that shocked the world after another. From a high-efficiency battery to cheap yet efficient computer chips. He did it all, creating one of the biggest publicly traded companies in the process. This all happened in the span of two years. It was a miracle, that's when it happens. On the eve of his 16th birthday, right after he went to sleep after a lavish party. In a dream, he got a visit from himself, another version of himself. The other him in the dream, who had long horns and pitch black eyes, told him a very shocking and disturbing truth. Apparently, when the accident happened years ago, he didn't die and instead his soul shattered, sending fragments to thousands of parallel universes, occupying the bodies of weaker-willed young men in different worlds that had different rules. Among the myriad worlds, Adrian's soul could only survive in 179 universes where it found a suitable body to occupy. And among those only 117 seemed to be still alive till this day. The other self belonged to a high world of magic and demons, and he was using forbidden magic to connect to the other parts of his soul through dreams, where a soul, no matter how scattered, was one. He had grave news to tell. Apparently, the worlds were rejecting Adrian's soul, some more than others, but slowly and surely bad things would start to happen soon to all of them. And according to that other self's hypothesis, none of the soul fragments would be able to survive past the age of 20 where each of them would suffer a huge backlash. 
Before then, they had to go back to their original body that had seemingly survived the accident which caused it to lose most of its soul. Their best chance to travel back would be in two years, which would mark eight years since their departure. At that time the cosmos would be nearly identical to the state it was in when they first traveled, allowing a smooth journey. The method of return was simple. To sacrifice the current body here is an offering for the original while activating a reversed summoning magical circuit. And here lay the problem. Across the many, different worlds where his soul survived, only 17 had magic, the rest had none and the souls in it had to find their own way back. Waking up that day, Adrian considered it to be a dream but soon after he began to realize that it might have been all true. Bad things started happening a month or so after, from his glasses chattering near him to almost getting struck by lightning on a bright day. Fearing that what he saw was true, he decided to run his own tests, and in order to do that, Adrian began to search for a way to break the world's rules and use magic. At first, when he was only researching nuclear physics and black holes everything was okay, but later as his experiments failed, he abandoned all this and changed course, turning to study traditional arts and folklore. He had a hunch that those might hold some key to activating magic in this world. Watching him, his family, who had been benefiting from his actions for the last few years, began to think he had gone crazy again. They wanted him to keep inventing new things to line up their pockets instead. At first, they presumed it was a temporary relapse, but as he persisted, they began to plot against him as he started wasting a lot of money on his project. They were waiting until he turned 18 to frame him with some crime then try him as an adult and throw him in some prison where killing him would be easy. He didn't care as after years of studying and remembering all the knowledge he had from the Forbidden Scroll back from his original world, he combined the knowledge of the two worlds and gained an understanding that those in the magical world only dreamed of. He figured out one shocking fact. This world had magic long ago, but for some reason about 5,000 years ago, the world rules changed and all the mana disappeared. And what his other self told him was true, the phenomena he had been experiencing were signs of world rejection. Just the other day, he was almost cut in half when a glass window fell over him when he was shopping. Feeling the urgency, he ran millions of calculations using supercomputers, trying to simulate a magical effect using this world's new rules. Combining everything he had to find a magical circuit that worked. The only question left was to find a suitable power source. Finally, after many trials and errors, he was able to figure out how to do it about two months ago, when he used a magical array method he got from a very old feng shui book with the energy of an entire power generating facility, the one that supplied the entire country. The experiment was to synchronize his soul with his original body, and it worked for just a fraction of a second, allowing him to see flashes of his original world, and this confirmed that the dream was true. Also, this experiment ended up creating a blackout around the entire country confirming Adrian's guess that magic was still possible, it just required a lot of energy. It all led to this moment. Adrian smiled as he stood up and touched the bomb with his bloodied hand. It was like he was touching a baby. Hopefully, the transfer will happen before the explosion erases the magical array. He had no connections in this world, and he got all the knowledge he would need from here. He might have benefited if he stayed here for a few more years to use the supercomputers in this world to do more magical simulations, but he was out of time. So, that night at 12.01, in an abandoned warehouse on a faraway mountain, a thermonuclear weapon was detonated. Other than the poor mountain range that got erased from the map, the only casualty was a lunatic. 